God's watchmen. And it's about the tower of the flock. Richard, you would love this because God in these end times is raising His watchmen to be a tower of the flock where we watch over His flock. And Jesus established Peter as a watchman of the tower of his flock. He said, Peter, do you love me? And Peter, of course, said, yes, I love you, Jesus. And then Jesus said, feed my lambs. There's a progression. Then he again said, Peter, do you love me? And Peter said, yes, I do, Jesus. And Jesus said, tend to my sheep. Because what happens when lambs grow up? They get sheep, right? Peter, do you love me? Yes, I do, Jesus. Then what? What? Feed my sheep. Amen? Amen? But amazingly enough, God uses the biggest mess ups Amen. to be the tower. Amen, Valerie? Amen. To be the tower of the flock. Why? Because we know where He found us. Amen. We have nothing to boast about except what, Dottie? Our weaknesses. I can tell you how weak I am. Hallelujah. I can preach on that all day long, but y'all don't want to hear that. Y'all want to hear how awesome He is. Amen? So we did Tower of the Fire. And that, the reason why we got Tower of Fire, why? Is because in Luke 14, 28, in the parable, where Jesus says, Having counted the cost, build a tower. And that word tower is pergos. Pergos in Greek. And what is interesting is per is P-Y-R. And when I saw P-Y-R, I saw pyrotechnics. What is that? Fireworks! Fourth of July! We're getting ready for the Fourth of July. Pyrotechnics, that's a fancy word for fireworks. Instead of crazy Ed or Wild Bill, I mean, I mean, it's like how crazy do you have to be to have a fireworks stand? You either have to be crazy or you have to be wild or something. Let me tell you what, there's called a radical tower of Pergos. The works of God in His tower of fire. And so that same word, per, actually comes from Matthew 3, 11 through 12, where Jesus says, where Jesus, Jesus in Scripture, John says, I have come to baptize you with a baptism unto repentance, but there comes one after me whose sandal I am not worthy to untie, he shall baptize you in the Holy Spirit and fire. Amen. And he will burn up the chaff. Hallelujah. Burn it up out of me, God. And he will bring what? His winnowing fan and th what? Thoroughly clear out his threshing floor. And immediately we go into the baptism of Jesus Christ. And we see John the Baptist getting ready to baptize Jesus Christ in Matthew 3. And John is timid. He's trepidatious. Why? He's baptizing God. Yes. <laughs> and he said, I don't need to baptize you. Basically, he's saying in his own language, you need to be baptizing me. But Jesus had a baptism that only Jesus Christ could go into. Amen. And Jesus said, permit it now. For this is the fulfillment of all righteousness. Now this is what we're going to constantly hear. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and what? His righteousness. And in the Tower of Fire we saw in Song of Solomon 8 where she said, my brothers told me if I was a wall they would build a castle on top of me. And she says, well, I'm a wall. Hallelujah. Build a castle. Hallelujah. That wall represents one thing. It represents righteousness. That the kingdom, seek ye first the kingdom of God, is built on what? The righteousness of Christ Jesus, not our self-righteousness, right? So this is what we're looking at. And I'm logical. God has given me a logic, but His logic is way above our logic. And He's causing us to go higher to comprehend His logic. Amen? So this is what we're looking at tonight. We're looking at now, we're going into part two of the tower. And this is going to be called Psalm 48, which we're not going to even get to tonight, but you get to get start the training. Psalm 48, the tower progressing. Because we go from glory to glory. What is amazing is God had already given me scriptures and the main focus for the part two of the tower progressing is Psalm 48. God had given me double digits, double digits. Within 24 hours before leaving for Ohio, I go to the grocery store and it's 5858. And then I go to another store and it's 40, uh, we go to another place. Our hotel was 4848 and our printing was 8181. 
And I noticed the eights. Thank you, Jesus, for eight because it means new beginning, but it also means part of covenant because marriage covenant is the number 16. Jesus fulfilled his eight. He is the Feast of Tabernacles, the seven days, and the eighth day, the holy day, the consecration day. Hallelujah. And on the eighth day, he entered the temple. Why? To be dedicated unto the Lord, right? We have our eight indicating that we are committed. We're counting the cost. We're committed. No how. No matter how ugly it looks like, we're not giving in. Amen. We might feel like it, but by His grace, we will continue to run the race. Amen? So we're going to start this Tower of Fire Part 2, and we're actually going to start getting into end time scripture, and we're going to start in Revelation 12. Revelation 12. And we're going to be in also Revelation 3 in a little bit, and we're going to talk about two particular churches but God has led me to some revelation, and we're going to get into Isaiah 41, like if that's not enough. And we're going to get into Malachi 3, and we'll see what else God wants to And we're going to get into Habakkuk 3, like, is that enough scripture? No, hallelujah, there's more. But I'm going to record this CD, and we're going to actually put it on YouTube so y'all can listen to it again and again and again. And you have Perry Stone to blame for the reason why I talk so fast. I listen to him enough. That I got it from him. But glory to God, God knows that he can get two hours of conversation into one hour on Robin CD. Hallelujah. <laughs> so here we go. Are y'all ready? Yes. Let's look at Revelation 12. Now remember, I would not choose this teaching. In fact, Rich's dad, who passed away three years ago, had already written an entire book on Revelation. We have not even opened it up yet. It has been given to our care. Rich's mom gave it to Rich and I to look at and to finish. I think there's some more work that has to be done on it. So Rich and I are going to co-labor over his father's work and we're going to finish the book he already started on Revelation. Amen. So when I tell you God gave me these scriptures, I cannot tell you that I put them together. I did put out a note that I reposted today that's called In Fear and in Trembling. I'm going to be pulling from that note from, from also the book of Enoch. And from Revelation 12 and Isaiah 41 from that particular note. But I did not know what God wanted me to preach tonight until I got on 22. And when we pulled on 22 from 78, God said, this scripture, this scripture, this scripture. I went, what? <gasps> that means, <gasps> that means, <gasps> what? What? <laughs> ha, hallelujah. Because right, I'm just a cheerleader for God. Hallelujah. <laughs> And when the football team's down, oh, we might as well hang up. It's just horrible. I'm going, no, it's not in Jesus' name. Get up, hallelujah, because there's resurrection power in you. I cannot stop with a gift of exhortation. That's my personality. That's my gift, hallelujah. So we are in a time where you have heard lots of prophecies that are doom and gloom. But I, my portion to the end time prophecies is to put some pom poms in your hand and y'all go, Woo! We get on the cheerleading team! Hallelujah! And you're going to be exhorted in God and you're going to leave out with some spiritual pom poms tonight and you're going to exhort others in Jesus' name. Because God, God's word is true and He is not a liar. And He has given me scriptures in sequence that identify that He shall protect us. That no matter how hard times get, no matter how bad things happen in this earth, our God will protect us. Amen? Amen. So that's my portion for this end time scriptures. Hallelujah. So let's, let's look at Daniel 12. I mean, not Daniel 12, but we'll get to Daniel 12. Thank you, Jesus. He's reminding me of Daniel 12 because actually we get that from Revelation 12. So let's look at Revelation 12. Scripture says, in a, verse 1, I'm reading out of the Amplified, And a great sign, wonder, warning of future events of ominous significance appeared in heaven. A woman clothed with the sun, with the moon under her feet, and with a crown-like garland, tiara of twelve stars on her head. She was pregnant, and she cried out in birth pangs in the anguish of her delivery. Then another ominous sign, wonder, 
was seen in heaven. Behold, a huge fiery red dragon with seven heads, ten horns, seven kingly crowns, diadems upon his head. His tail swept across the sky and dragged down a third of the stars and flung them to earth. And the dragon stationed himself in front of the woman who was about to be delivered so that he might devour her child as soon as she brought it forth. And she brought forth a male child, one who is destined to shepherd, rule all the nations with an iron staff scepter. And her child was caught up to God and to his throne. And the woman herself fled into the desert, the wilderness, where she has a retreat prepared for her. Do y'all hear that? She has a retreat prepared for her by God in which she is to be fed and kept safe 42 months, three and a half years. Now my focus is not going to be on every single detail in Revelation 12, but I have to tell you what the Father has told me to tell His people so you will be fitly prepared. Amen? Amen. There are a lot of people who believe in pre-tribulation rapture. I am going to read you Scripture and I'm going to tell you what the Father has told me where we will be prepared and we're going to go to the church of Philadelphia and we're going to go to the church of Laodicea to get better revelation and then we're going to go into like, if that's not enough, we're going to go into Habakkuk and Malachi and Isaiah and Holy Spirit is going to bring all these scriptures together and interpret them because there's one message. I love how Mark Rutland says it. Mark Rutland, who's a genius at delivering the book of Revelation, he basically says it like I tell my husband. I tell my husband, if everything is going wrong in life, I just need you to say these, these beautiful words. Everything's going to be all right. And somehow when my husband, no matter how much chaos, no matter how bad everything really is, if he says to me, Robin, everything's going to be all right, I'm like, Whew, okay, thank you, Jesus. Do you understand? And Mark Rutland said the same thing. He said, basically, the book of Revelation, Jesus is telling us things are going to get hard. And then there's going to be a time they're going to get harder. Yeah. And then they're really going to get terrible. But all right. in the end, everything's going to be all right. I said, see, Rich, there you go. Jesus does it so. Hallelujah. Every husband should do it. Right? Amen. Amen. And I'm going to give you the interpretation that God gave Robin. Now, there's many brilliant teachers out there. And I'm open to correction. I listen to apologists who teach the scripture, so I'm not, not open. I am very open to the truth. But I can only give you what God has revealed to me by the interpretation of scriptures God's bringing tonight, okay? So here we see, first of all, there's a woman and she's wearing a tiara and it has 12 stars on it, right? And she's going, she's pregnant, she's birthing. Now remember, we're coming from the Tower of Fire from the last class, right? From the last training. So while she's pregnant, there's a sign in the heavens and what happens? A fiery dragon sweeps a third of the angels, right? He sweeps uh, with his tail a third and what happens? They're cast out of heaven down to earth, right? This is back to Genesis. Here we go back to Genesis, right? And here we see that in this process, this woman that's pregnant, he's after one thing, her child. And coming out of this woman is the ruler of all the entire kingdom who will rule with an iron scepter. And immediately when he comes out, he ascends to the very throne, his throne up in heaven where God is. And we know this to be Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. But we have to get understanding because I'm telling you, Holy Spirit gave me greater understanding of this woman. Now, a lot of times we've seen Mary. And I mean, God is multifaceted like a diamond. He's not just one way. Scripture has layers. You can read the same Scripture. And as you look at it from a different angle, get 20 
25 different views of it. Think about it. If there are 22 quintillion uh, atoms in a grain of sand, how much can God do with one scripture? Amen. So let's look at this. God started showing me. He said, Robin, go back to Micah 4, where we started the Tower of the Flock. So let's look at Micah 4 to get understanding as we proceed forward. Micah 4, and we're going to get understanding, glory to God, of this Tower of the Flock. Micah 4. Scripture says, now this is where we got the Tower of the Flock. This is the prophecy of Messiah. This is prophecy of Jesus Christ, right? So here it is, Micah 4. Verse 8. And you, O tower of the flock, the hill and stronghold of the daughter of Zion, unto you the former dominion shall come, the kingdom of the daughter of Jerusalem. So this is the prophecy about Messiah. And it says about Messiah, He will be born in the tower of the flock. We know this in our western world as where Jesus was born. There was no room in the inn, right? So in the western world, we think that He was born in a barn with animals. Jesus was born at the tower of the flock. And we went into Scripture, into Genesis, where Abraham, where we see Abraham, but we also see Isaac. And we, see, uh, we, also, we also see with uh, Rachel, when she gives birth to Benjamin, Rachel gives birth to Benjamin, it's at this place where Jacob, I'm, I'm getting, okay, it's Jacob. There's so many. God help me, Jesus. Where Jacob has Benjamin because Rachel dies when Benjamin's born. She wants to name him Ben-Oni, which means son of my sorrow. And Jacob says, no, he's not Ben-Oni. He's Benjamin, son of the right hand. Woo! Hallelujah. And then after Benjamin is born, which is prophetic because where does Jesus sit? At the right hand of what? God, right? Then we see that Jacob, which is then God calls him in Scripture, Israel, that he goes and he spreads his tent at the Migdal Edar, which means Tower of the Flock. And this is in Bethlehem. This tower is in Bethlehem. And what is this tower? It is a watchman's tower that every pure, spotless lamb is born in that is to be given for sacrifice. Yes. And the only shepherds that shepherd at this place are those who have one duty, to watch when the mothers are ready to give birth to the pure, spotless lamb. And they bring the mothers into a stall and they allow her to give birth and then the baby the lamb comes and then they lift the lamb up and they dedicate the lamb to the Lord. Jesus was born at the tower of the flock. He is our stronghold. He is our tower. Amen. So God gave us scriptures but unto this tower it says unto this tower, this stronghold of the daughter of Zion, unto you the former dominion. Woo! Hallelujah. The former dominion shall come. The kingdom of the daughter of Jerusalem. Woo! Because we're talking about the holy city. Hallelujah. Revelation 20 and 21. And, out, and there descended out of heaven a holy city like a bride adorned for her husband. It is the holy city what? Jerusalem. So what God is saying, wait, people, wait, sons and daughters of God, because there's a king coming named Yeshua, Jesus, and he's bringing the dominion of heaven. And as it is in heaven, it's going to be on earth. And this will be for the daughter of Jerusalem. Amen. Right. So now let's look at Revelation 12. Let's go back to Revelation 12. What we see in Revelation 12 is Jesus coming forth 
with this power, with this authority, as it particularly says in verse 5. Revelation 12, verse 5. And she brought forth a male child, one who is destined to shepherd. Woo! Tower of the flock. Hallelujah. To shepherd, rule all the nations with the iron staff, scepter. And her child was caught up to God and to his throne. This is Jesus Christ. And this is what the Lord started showing me. He said, Robin, go to Micah 4. This woman that I'm showing you for this particular message is indicative of the daughter of Jerusalem. It's the holy city. Jesus birthed forth the holy city. By His blood, we have been brought into relationship with Jesus Christ. Now, I know I'm goading you, but hold on. What does that mean, I'm goading you? I'm stretching you. She said, don't let us be comfortable. Guess what? You're not going to be comfortable. <laughs> when Jesus taught the disciples, that word actually taught in Hebrew is lamed, and it means to goad. When you get a cattle goat, you don't go, come here, little cow, come on. You go, come on, cow. That cow's not going to move when you whistle for it. You've got to goad that cow. So God is goading you because we have to get a revelation for our generation for this hour. We have to comprehend this. So here we see that this woman, now when Jesus ascends, what happens? The woman flees into the wilderness and in this place she finds a retreat thank you jesus we need a spa hallelujah yeah. Woo! if it's gonna get rough god please give me a retreat yeah. prepared for her by god in which she is to be fed hallelujah fed and safe she's kept for three and a half. Doesn't this encourage you, Beverly? Don't you want to just run out now? For three and a half years. Woo! Now we look at fed. Now let's go back to the Tower of the Fire last session. It says in Isaiah 16.1. Glory to God. Let's go to Isaiah 16.1 because we've got to revisit this. Isaiah 16.1. This is a prophecy of Messiah, of the Lamb. Of the Lamb. The son of the right hand. The tower of the flock. Are y'all having fun tonight? Amen. See, end times is really fun when you got Holy Spirit giving you interpretations of scriptures of exhortation. Amen. So I'm going to tell you the King James Version because I, I, I cheated and I wrote it down in my Amplified because I love the King James Version for Isaiah 16.1. It says, Send ye the Lamb. Amen. To the ruler of the land of Selah, to the wilderness, into the mount of the daughter of Zion. Woo! I just love saying the daughter of Zion. Hallelujah. Because this daughter is not some wretched, pitiful thing. She, we saw in the last training, she is a wild bullock. Marita, she has hooves of bronze. She's got a horn of iron. And she's been on the threshing floor. And God lifts her up. And she just starts dancing on the threshing floor. And the enemy comes under her feet. Woo! Hallelujah. That song of Solomon 613, Kim. The dance of my hot name. The dance of two armies. I just, Lord God, we're going to have fun tonight. Y'all going to get set free, hallelujah, from fear in Jesus' name. So here it says, send you the lamb to the ruler of the land of Selah. That word Selah in Hebrew means the rock. It means a strong hold, a tower, a fortable, a fortified, stationed, positioned rock in which we will be hidden. Woo! Send you the lamb to the tower of the flock. So let's look at this. Send you the lamb to the ruler of the land of Selah, to the rock. Then to the wilderness. Wait a minute. There's a process. First we see the rock. Then we see the wilderness. And then it says, into the mount. Say mount like you mean it. So, oh, come on, come on. Mount. mount. Woo! 
There you go. Hallelujah. I hope I'm going to be saying, I'm going to say, Mount. Mount. Hallelujah. Mount. When you know what it means. Look at Rich. He's getting wild over here. He's a wild bullock. Hallelujah. When you know what it means, you will be saying, Mount. Hallelujah. Of the daughters of Zion. So this here is a process. There's the rock. Then there's the wilderness. Sign us up for the wilderness class. Hallelujah. Then. Say then. Then. then there's the mountain. Hallelujah. Woo. Okay, God showed us as Jesus was baptized into that baptism of the fulfillment of all righteousness. That baptism, Holy Spirit led him where? To the wilderness. Do you see the process? He is the rock of salvation. Amen. Selah, send you the lamb to the Selah. That's the baptism. Then to what? The wilderness. Why? To go face Satan. To go face that lying slanderer, that, that conniver, that trickster, that one that accuses the brethren night and day to go face him and say, it is written, we not, shall not live by bread for our stomachs, but we shall live by the bread of God's word alone. So thank you, Jesus. It's our turn. Yes. So we come into that fullness of salvation by the blood of the Lamb, right? But we're still working out our own what? Salvation in fear and in trembling. It's a process. You are rising up from glory to glory. 2 Corinthians 3.18 Into that righteousness, into that glory of Christ Jesus as you behold the glory of God. Amen? Amen. So here Jesus goes into the wilderness to face Satan, right? Now go with me to also Micah 5. Micah 5 because we've got to get some understanding. About the rock. Say the rock. rock. Say, feed me, God. Feed me, God. By the rock. By the rock. Now we'll get understanding. Micah 5, which happens to be after Micah 4. We did Micah 5 in the last training. Micah 5 in Scripture says, verse 4. Micah 5, verse 4. This is a prophecy about Messiah. Well, let's start in verse 1. Micah 5, verse 1. Now gather yourself in troops, O daughter of troops. A state of siege has been placed against us. They shall smite the ruler of Israel with a rod, a scepter on the cheek. But you, Bethlehem, Ephrathah, you are little to be among the class of Judah. Yet out of you shall one come forth for me, who is to be the ruler in Israel whose goings forth have been from of old, from the ancient of days, eternity. Woo! Hallelujah. The former dominion. Therefore shall he give them up until the time that she who travails. Oh my, this is Revelation 12 has brought forth then what is left of his brethren shall return to the children of Israel and he shall stand and feed his flock in the strength of the Lord in the majesty of the name of the Lord his God and they shall dwell secure hallelujah for then shall he be great even to the ends of the earth hallelujah do you see this so now let's go back to Revelation 12 Revelation 12 it says in scripture as they are as they go in to the wilderness there is a retreat prepared, verse 6, Revelation 12, verse 6, for her by God in which she is to be fed. Woo! By what, Gina? Strength. Yes. God showed us in the last training when Jesus described Matthew 16, on this rock I shall build my church. God showed us clearly that that rock is one thing, the strength of God. Yeah. On the strength of God, He will build His church yeah. and the gates of hell yeah. shall not prevail against that strength. Yeah. Those that wait on the Lord, He yeah. shall what? Renew their what? Strength. Because yeah. we all get this from Isaiah 40. This all started from Isaiah 40, okay? So here the woman retreats and she's hidden. Say hidden. Yeah. And she's fed. Yeah with strength yes. for three and a half 
years. Glory. Aren't you excited, Beverly? Doesn't this bless your heart? Yes. Then war broke out in heaven. Michael and his angels went forth to battle with the dragon. And the dragon and his angels fought. So who is this? Satan yes. and Michael. The angelic armies of God and the demonic armies of Satan, right? But they were defeated. Hallelujah. Yes. And there was no room for them in heaven any longer. And the huge dragon was cast down and out that age-old serpent who was called the devil, Satan. He who is the seducer, deceiver of all humanity the world over. He was forced out and down to the earth and his angels were flung out along with him. Then I heard a strong, loud voice in heaven saying, Now it has come, the salvation and the power and the kingdom, the dominion, the reign of our God, and the power, the sovereignty, the authority of His Christ, the Messiah, for the accuser of the brethren, He who keeps bringing before our God charges against them day and and night has been cast out. Hallelujah. Now we saw G Jesus cast Satan out and like lightning he fell, right? So that had already happened. But now let's see how it applies to us. God is revealing that in the time of trouble that he will keep his people. So here we're talking about one thing, the time of trouble and what's happening. Satan has been cast out, right? Because what happened? The dominion, the rule of Christ Jesus had come to heaven, right? Jesus sprinkled his blood on the mercy seat and he brought that fullness of the righteousness of his person and that baptism into heaven. The devil could not go in there and accuse God's people anymore because the blood is louder than Satan. Hallelujah. The blood sealed the door. It shut it in Jesus' name. But there's many facets to this. It's not just one facet. So we have to understand. Now I love how Mark Rutland says it. He says, you have to not understand this with a Western mindset. We come into a square room, we see a picture over here, and we think that all the pictures are in order just like this and tell the story. He says, no, you have to understand this from an Asian mindset. Imagine you walk into a circular room, and you don't even know where the door is. It's shut behind you, and all of a sudden the walls spin around. And you don't know where the door is because it's seamless, and all these pictures are all over the wall, or over the ceilings, they're all over the floor. You're going to leave that room and you're not going to say, oh, well, this goes first, this goes second, this goes third. You're going to leave that room with ideas and opinions and stories and the enlightenment of God's Word. Do you understand? Because it cannot come by our power or our might. It can only come by Holy Spirit because I'm teaching you something that God has just taught me in just a very brief time. I could not teach this before because I had to eat all these other scriptures first. Now God is bringing all these scriptures together for me to give them out to you as Holy Spirit has interpreted them to me, okay? So we're looking at this part where Satan has been cast out. Now verse 11 says, And they have overcome, conquered him. Who has? God's people. By means of the blood of the Lamb. And by the utterance of their testimony, for they did not love, cling to life, even when faced with death, holding their lives cheap till they had to die for their witnessing. Therefore, be glad, O heavens, and you that dwell in them, but woe to you, earth, O earth and the sea, for the devil has come down to you in fierce anger, fury, because he knows that he has only a short time left. Woo! And when the dragon saw that he was cast down to earth, he went in pursuit of the woman who had given birth to the male child. We're talking about the holy city Jerusalem. We're talking about the ancient kingdom eternity, right? But the woman was supplied woo, 
with two wings of a giant eagle so that she might fly from the presence of the serpent into the desert, the wilderness, to the retreat. Thank you, Jesus. To the retreat where she is to be kept safe and fed for three and a half years. Now, I think this is still the same three and a half years. In my opinion, this is not thus saith the Lord. Because God is multifaceted. Because two things are occurring. Satan is being cast out. But now we're seeing a different dimension of this woman. She is being fed three and a half years. Years. Then out of his mouth the serpent spouted forth water like a flood after the woman that she might be carried off with the torrent. But the earth came to her rescue of the woman and the ground opened and its mouth swallowed up and the stream of water which the dragon had spouted from his mouth. So then the dragon was furious and enraged at the woman, and he went away to wage war on the remainder of her descendants, on those who obey God's commandments, who have the testimony of Jesus Christ, and adhere to it and bear witness to Him. Now we are looking at there's seven years in the tribulation. Three and a half plus three and a half, right? Equals what? Seven. I'm only going to focus on three and a half in the beginning because that's all Robin has knowledge of. I cannot go further than that because I would be speaking out of context from what Holy Spirit has shown me. Now again, I am not an end times theolo theologian. I am an end times cheerleader. And I am here to exhort you on this three and a half years. Because I'm going to tell you, I know that God is going to catch us up and change us in the twinkling of an eye. I know that. But I know that it is necessary for us to go through these trials. According to Revelation 12. Now I'm just going to talk about the retreat. Hallelujah. And about how He keeps us and He feeds us because there's something that's going on in that retreat where when we come out, we're not going to look woo, the same way that when we went in. You know when we go to a spa, ladies, we go to a spa, we go in with our flip-flops, our t-shirts, our shorts, and we're getting ready for our date with our husband that night. Now, we don't show up to our husband or even a wedding. A wedding. You go to get your nails done. You don't wear your wedding dress to the nail salon. You wear your t-shirt and your pants to the nail salon. You don't wear your wedding dress. But you sure don't show up to the wedding wearing a t-shirt and the pants. Wearing your hair all up in a ponytail and no makeup. You show up to the wedding, the most beautiful you've ever been, where people go, Woo! You look good! You look the best I've ever seen you! Hallelujah! While we are in this retreat, we are being prepared for our bridegroom. We are being fitted for the wedding dress. Maybe we'll lose some more inches. Glory to God, take it in a little bit right there. Hallelujah. Woo! I look so good now. I came in here and I lost 20 pounds. Hallelujah. Woo! We're being prepared. But we got to look at this. But the woman, the dragon, saw when he was cast down. He was angry, so he could not go up to heaven. So what's he going after? Heaven on earth. Yep, that's right. He's seeking the children of heaven. Amen. And he is angry. He is spitting mad, and he's coming after the woman, or can we say after that, that city, Jerusalem, the holy city, amen? In this holy city, all of a sudden the woman was supplied with two wings like a giant eagle. Well, wait a minute, where is that in the Old Testament? Isaiah 40, 31. Those that wait on the Lord, He shall renew your strength, and He will lift you up on wings of an eagle and draw you up close to the sun. Hallelujah.
Hallelujah. You shall run and not be weary. You shall walk and not faint. Hallelujah. Because why? Because Daniel 7, 25 says that Satan, because he is so angry. Let's turn to Daniel 7, 25 because we have to get understanding. Satan is trying to do one thing to y'all. He's trying to weary you. He is trying to weary you. And we've seen in Scripture where Paul says in Scripture, the only place Satan can weary you is in your mind. He cannot weary your body. He can weary your mind. And stress in your mind can weary your body. So let's look at Daniel 7. Daniel 7. Are y'all enjoying this? Yes. Glory to God, I'm enjoying this. I don't even know what God's going to say next, Debbie, but hallelujah, I'm excited. Margaret, God, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. Daniel 7, 25. Y'all say, glory to God, I went to an end times meeting. Hallelujah. And it sounds like things are really going to be terrible. But glory to God, we're going to be looking really good. Hallelujah. <laughs> Verse 25 of Daniel 7, again, I'm reading the Amplified. And he shall speak words against the Most High God. And he shall wear out the saints and the Most High of the, of the Most High and think to change the time of the sacred feast and holy days and the law. And the saints shall be given into his hands for a time of three and a half years. Ding, 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 ding. Oh, <laughs> so this is Revelation 12. But now let's look at Isaiah 40. Isaiah 40. Because we got to get understanding. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word, right? Right. Because, and then I'm going to tell you my dream, which I've already told uh, a lot of people who were here when we did an, another treat gene that Holy Spirit did. Isaiah 40. Let's look at verse 28. Have you not known... Have you not heard the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth does not faint or grow weary? There is no searching of his understanding. He gives power to the faint and weary, to him who has no might. He increases strength, Woo! causing it to multiply, making it to abound. Even you shall faint and be weary, and selected young men shall feebly stumble and fall exhausted. But those who wait for the Lord, who expect, look for hope in Him, shall change. Woo! There it is. Change and renew their strength and power. They shall lift their wings and mount up close to God as eagles mount up to the sun. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint or become tired. Now this is indicative of Revelation 12. Of the woman that is lifted up on eagles' wings and she's taken to where? The retreat. The stronghold, or can we say, the tower of the flock. Woo! Hallelujah. There's so much i got to get. I'm not going to even get to all of it tonight because there's just so many scriptures. Hallelujah. Are y'all excited? Amen. But we have to get understanding here, right? So let's look at Revelation. Let's look at Revelation 3. We're going to look at two churches in Revelation 3. We're going to look at Philadelphia and Laodicea. God has told me tonight... Not thus saith the Lord for everybody, but I'm telling you for this teaching tonight. He said, Robin, there are going to be specifically two churches manifested. The church of brotherly love and the church of the world of Laodicea yeah. that's lukewarm. So let's look at Revelation 3. Amen. Revelation 3. Now, I love this because our ministry is also Isaiah 22, 22, the key of David. Revelation 3, let's start in verse 7. And to the angel messenger of the assembly church in Philadelphia write, These are the words of the Holy One, the True One, He who has the key of David, who opens and no one shall shut, who shuts and no one shall open. I know your record of works and what you are doing. See! I have set before you a door wide open which no man is able to shut. I know that you have but a little power 
and yet you have kept my word, guarded my message, and have not renounced or denied my name. Take note, I will make those of the synagogue of Satan who say they are Jews and are not but lie. Behold, I will make them come and bow down before your feet and learn and acknowledge that I have loved you because you have guarded and kept my word yeah. of patient endurance, held fast the lesson of my patience with the expected endurance that I give you. I will also keep you safe. Say safe. safe. From the hour of trial. Amen. Testing which is coming to the whole world to try those who dwell upon the earth. I am coming quickly. Hold fast what you have so that no one may rob you, deprive you of your crown. He who overcomes is victorious. I will make him a pillar in the sanctuary of my God. He will never be put out or go out of it and I will write on him the name of the city of my God. The new Jerusalem which descends from my God out of heaven and my own new name. Woo! That's awesome right there. The Lord is showing me in relation to this teaching. I've taught this scripture many times. I, uh, so many times I cannot even keep count, okay? But for this teaching, the Lord is showing me that Jesus opening that door wide open that no one can shut is that door of safety in the time of testing and trial. No one can keep you out of that door. He has opened it wide open that no one can shut it. And what, who does he say it's for? It's for those who have had but a little power. Right. Yeah. Gina, these people are like hanging on with their fingernails, right, Stephen? They, they have been so tested. They have been in so many trials, Stephanie, that they just think, I, I, I've just failed. I might as well just give up. <laughs> but God says, oh, no. Yeah, yeah. You held on to my word. Yeah. And you've had but just a little power. Yeah. So now I'm coming to you, and I'm giving you some strength, and I'm going to raise you up. And I'm going to cause you to be shut in in his person in that time of trial that we will be a pillar in his sanctuary. We will be in that holy name, Jerusalem. We will be transformed. Something's going to happen in the secret place. We're going to be so beautiful, nobody's going to be able to even recognize who we are. Woo! And I'll get to that person in a minute. Hallelujah. But I'll just get to this person tonight. Hallelujah. This person tonight. Who is this person? Okay, do y'all remember Mount of Transfiguration? Jesus is on that mountain. And there's, there's his three, right? Peter, James, uh, Peter, James, and John. Is that right? The three? Peter, James, and John. And Jesus turns so brilliantly in light. That they are immediately, Peter, you would think he'd be tongue tied. Oh, yeah. He was tongue, his tongue just fell out. Let's build altars to, uh, <laughs> you know, Moses. <laughs> let's just build altars, right? And Jesus said to them to not tell anyone, right? So Jesus is so brilliantly, magnificently light. I mean, there's no way to describe them. White is not even the right word. Right. It's just light. It's sun rays. It's the sunshine of God coming forth. It says brilliance and purity, pure <laughs> light. God told me, he said, Robin, that is the robe of righteousness. Woo! Yes. That is the robe of righteousness. And guess what? Let's look at Revelation 7. Hallelujah. Let's look at Revelation 7 because we have to understand this group. Amen? Amen. Revelation 7, we're going to look at verse 14. Revelation 7, verse 14. Well, let's start in verse 13. Glory to God. Let's just start in verse 11. <laughs> 
Amen. And all the angels were standing around the throne and around the elders of the heavenly Sanhedrin and the four living creatures and they fell prostrate before the throne and worshiped God. Amen. So be it, they cried. Blessing, glory, majesty, and splendor, and wisdom, and thanks, and honor, and power, and might be ascribed to our God to the ages and ages forever and ever throughout the eternities of eternities. Amen. So be it. Then addressing me, one of the elders of the heavenly Sanhedrin said, Who are these people clothed in white, long, white robes? And from where have they come? I replied, Sir, you know. And he said to me, These are they who have come out of the great tribulation, persecution, and have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. For this reason, they are now before the very throne of God and serve Him day and night in His sanctuary. Woo! His temple. And He who is sitting upon the throne will protect and spread His tabernacle. Woo! Hallelujah. His tabernacle over and shelter them in His presence. Woo! Glory to God. They shall hunger no more, neither thirst any more, neither shall the sun smite them, nor any scorching heat. For the Lamb who is in the midst of the throne will be the shepherd, and He will guide them to springs of waters of life, and God will wipe, wipe away every tear from their eyes. Hallelujah. Woo! These are those people, Felicia, who have washed their robes in the blood of the Lamb when that have come out of the great tribulation. Yes. Revelation 12. Yes. It's those that are in the place of trials and tribulation. The enemy's trying to weary them, but they choose to wait on the Lord. Yes. And God lifts them up. And he hides them. Are there going to be martyrs? Yes. But God is saying to his church, be encouraged. He's going to shut you up in the day of trouble. He's going to protect you. You don't need to dig a tunnel. He is the rock. He is our stronghold. In Jesus' name, all man can do is dig a tunnel. But all there can be in man's tunnel are beasts and unclean things. But on the highway of holiness, no unclean thing, no beast can get on that highway. God will protect you. Woo! Hallelujah. He will protect you. Because we're going to get revelation because we're going to get into Enoch. That same word white there, that word white is this word where Jesus is transformed at the Mount of Transfiguration. That word for his robe is only used two places in scripture. Where he, There's a train. The train always indicates something. Do you hear God? The only two places the brilliant light is used in Scripture is on the Mount of Transfiguration and right here in Revelation 7. The robes are going to be that brilliant light. Why? Because they are the robes of righteousness. Why? Because it has been required of you in this trying and in this testing for you to press into God and to wash your robe in the blood when you feel like giving up. He says, no, come on into the washing machine. You're shut in and you're going to wash that robe in the blood of the Lamb. We're going to be shut in. We're going to be washing our robes in the blood of the Lamb. That something's going to happen in that washing machine. It's better than pure right. It doesn't need a bleach cycle. It has a Holy Spirit blood of Jesus cycle that when you come out of that mountain, you're going to be woo, like light. You're going to
going to shine like the sun. That's Song of Solomon 6. Song of Solomon 6. My dove is as pure as the sun and as fair as the moon. No, hallelujah. This is that woman. This is that woman. The holy city, Jerusalem, who's in travail, who's giving birth. She's giving birth to an instrument of righteousness. She's giving birth to a scepter. She's given birth to a kingdom that has no end, that does not stop, that is eternal. Now, will there be martyrs? Yes! But that's not what my job is. Thank you, Jesus. That's someone else's job. My job is to tell you He's going to be our stronghold. Yeah. He's going to shut us up in the rock. Now we go to Habakkuk. Hallelujah. Habakkuk 3. God's got just a few more scriptures. Hold on. We're not going to do all of them tonight. Thank you, Jesus. We can only take so much, Margaret. My goodness. I'm already fired up. I feel like a tower of fire standing. I got orange toenails, orange shirt, orange hair. Hallelujah. I'm on fire. <laughs> Habakkuk. Habakkuk 3, Habakkuk 3, Holy Spirit gave me this. And what's so funny is he had already given me a scripture in here that I forgot about for the tower progressing. Habakkuk 3, a prayer of Habakkuk, verse 1. The prophet set to wild. Woo! I like this song already. <laughs> wild, enthusiastic. Woo! Triumphal music. It's not just woo, bringing in the she's bring. It's like, woo, hallelujah. It's wild. That's called the wild bull. Do you know bullock in Hebrew? We did that in the Tower of Fire. Bullock in Hebrew means to break forth in wild strength. So what we're talking about, he, Habakkuk, he's a bullock in this song. Now let's listen to the song in the time he's in. A prayer of Habakkuk the prophet set to wild, enthusiastic, triumphal music. O oh Lord, I have heard the report of you and was afraid. O oh Lord, revive your work in the midst of the years. In the midst of the years, make yourself known in wrath. Earnestly remember love, pity, and mercy. God approaching from Sinai came from Timon which represents Edom, the Holy One from the Mount Paran. Selah, pause and think of that. His glory covered the heavens and the earth was full of His praise. So here he starts out this song and he says, Lord, I've heard a report of you and I was afraid. Why? Because God's coming in wrath. And He's coming in wrath and judgment. Why? Because let's go back to the baptism of Holy Spirit and fire. That baptism of Holy Spirit and fire is seen in Malachi 3. 1 through 3 where Jesus is depicted by the angel messenger of covenant. And it says, And the angel messenger of covenant will come to his temple suddenly. And he will come in fire to purify the sons of Levi. And he will wash them with soap. Why? So that they can offer an offering of what? Righteousness. Woo! And then immediately it says in verse 4, And he draws near to the earth for judgment. And he takes care of the sorcerers, the wicked ones. Do you understand we're being prepared for this judgment? So that we will be kept... Yes. We will be marked. We will be kept because we are being purified so that we can draw near to Him. But oh my, He's drawing near to us. And as He comes as a scorching heat, all we're going to feel is the righteousness of His person as we tremble in holy fire of His Word in our bones that is shut up as we have been purified, as we have been purged by the blood of the Lamb. Amen. Amen. So here we see he's here in the midst of judgment. And he says, God is approaching. He's approaching and he came from Timon. Why is Timon so important? Because that is the grandson of Esau. Don't you know sin always keeps birthing? And actually Sanballat, Sanballat and Nehemiah, the evil one, actually is a Persian name, mean, meaning sin has been birthed. 
So sin is looking somewhere to latch on, right? But Jesus went down to Edom and he trampled it and got the blood all over the place in that wine press. That's Isaiah 63. Where have you come from? Who is this that comes from Edom and Bozrah who has trampled the wine press, who's got blood stains on his garment? He says he brought righteousness. In other words, he's putting Satan's defeat right all up in his face. Yes. Woo! Let me remind you about your defeat. I've already crushed your head, yes. and you're about to see it a second time. Right. Uh, because there's Taman, there's the grandson. He's saying, uh uh, we're going to take care of this right now. We're going to take care of Taman and this sin, this wickedness. And then immediately it says, and the holy from the mount of Paran. The holy from the mount of Paran, which is in the Sinai region. Wait a minute. This is the holy place. You know what Paran means in Hebrew? A place of caverns. Woo! We're shut up in the cleft of the rock. He has hidden us in the cavern. We don't need machines to dig a tunnel. He's going to lift us up. And he's going to hide us in the cleft of the rock. He's going to give us that strength. Amen. Glory to God. Now let's look at Habakkuk 3 as we go further and look at Scripture here. Verse 4. And his brightness was thus like the sunlight, raised strength from his hand. Wow. And there in the sun-like splendor was the hiding place of his power. Woo! Before him went the pestilence as in Egypt, and burning plague followed his feet as in Sennacherib's army. He stood and measured the earth. He looked and he shook the nations. The eternal mountains were scattered. The perpetual hills bowed low. His ways are everlasting and his goings of old. I, Habakkuk, in a vision saw the tents of Kushan in affliction the tent curtains of the land of Midian trembled were you displeased with the rivers O Lord or was your anger against the rivers you divided was your wrath against the Red Sea that you rode before upon your horses and your chariots of victory and deliverance your bow was made quite bare sworn to the tribes of Israel by your sure word were the rods of chastisement scourges calamities Selah Think of that. With rivers you cleaved the earth, bringing forth waters in dry places. The mountains saw you. They trembled and reeked as if in pain. The overflowing of the water passed by. At the deluge, the deep uttered its voice and lifted its hands on high. The sun and moon stood back before Joshua in their habitation at the light of your arrows as they sped at the flash of your glittering spear. You marched through the land in indignation. You trampled and thrust the nations in anger. You went forth and have come for the salvation of your people, for the deliverance and victory of your anointed people, Israel. You smote the head of the house of the wicked, laying bare the foundation even to the neck. Selah, you pierced with your own arrow, with his own arrows, the head of the enemy's hordes. They came out as a whirlwind to scatter me, the people rejoicing as if to devour the poor, Israel secretly. You have trodden the sea with your horses beside the heap, great in surging waters. I heard and my whole inner self trembled. My lips quivered at the sound. Rottenness enters into my bones and under me down to my feet I tremble. I will wait quietly for the day of trouble and distress when there shall come up against my people, him who is about to invade and oppress them. 
though the fig tree does not blossom and there is no fruit on the vines. Though the product of the oil fails and fields yield no food, though the flock is cut off from the fold and there is no cattle in the stalls, yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will exalt in victorious God of my salvation. The Lord God is my strength, my personal bravery, my invincible army. He makes my feet like hands' feet and will make me to walk and not to stand still in terror, but to walk and make spiritual progress upon my high places of trouble, of trouble suffering, of responsibility. Do you see this? He is having... Woo! He's having a wild song. This doesn't sound like a place to have a wild song. But there's so much strength of God in His person that He, His joy is the strength of the Lord. The strength of the Lord is His joy. Do you understand this? Though mountains may fall and a thousand at your left and ten thousand at your right, He shall be your stronghold. He shall be your tower and it shall not come nigh your dwelling. He will lift your feet upon the rock in the day of trouble. You will be hidden in His tent and He he will cause you to be covered in His glory. And there in that place, you are going to be fed over and over and over and over. And as that feeding goes on three and a half years, something's going to happen when this door opens up and this group comes out. They're going to look something holy, ferocious. Are y'all ready? We've got to get into a couple more things. Are y'all ready to handle just a couple more things? Because this, I can't hold, I can't let y'all leave without hearing this awesome stuff. God has always given me Jude 14 and 15. It's the prophecy of Enoch. Jude 14 and 15. Because this is where we're going to get understanding. Jude, Jude only has one chapter. Chapter 1, Jude. Verse 14 says, It was of these people... Moreover, that Enoch in the seventh generation from Adam prophesied when he said, Behold, the Lord comes with His myriads of holy ones, ten thousands of His saints to execute judgment upon all and convict the impious, the unholy ones of their ungodly deeds which they have committed in such an ungodly way and all the severe abusive jarring things which ungodly sinners have spoken against Him. Let me put this in your language. He's saying there's going to be a heavenly beautiful troop of people they're going to be so bright that these are going to be the seventh generation in other words they're going to be those born on earth that have come into the kingdom he said these people are going to be called the holy ones yes. the just ones yes. that when they walk around other people immediately conviction comes that they are brought under the power of God Almighty yes. now I love this because that, that is chapter 2 of Enoch Chapter 2 of Enoch is just that prophecy. But God had me bring in Enoch 95. Enoch is not in the Bible, but he is referred to here in Jude. So I'm going to go to Enoch's book. Enoch 95 verses 1 through 4 say, Wait in hope, you righteous, for suddenly shall sinners perish from before you, and you shall exercise dominion. Even then, according to your will, in the day of sufferings of sinners, your offspring shall be exalted and lifted up like eagles. Yes. Your nest shall be more exalted than that of the avest. You shall ascend and enter into the cavities of the earth and into the cleft of the 
rocks forever like conies from the sight of the ungodly who shall groan over you and weep like sirens. You shall not fear those who trouble you for restoration shall be yours. A splendid light shall shine around you and the voice of tranquility shall be heard from heaven. Woe to you sinners for your wealth makes you resemble saints but your hearts reproach you. Know that you are sinners. This word shall testify against you for the remembrance of that one. Do you see this? This is what God showed me. This is going to blow your mind. As in the days of Noah. Where were Noah, where were the righteous people? Shut up in the boat. And where were the other people? That is it! Reading in pain. Groaning. Why? Because the ungodly were kept out of the place of hiding. Again, I want to clarify myself. There will be martyrs. I'm not saying they're not. I don't know what everybody's life is, but I know where my faith is. Yes. And whatever is my portion, God's grace is sufficient. Yes. Amen. Yes. Yeah. But for me and my household, I'm claiming this. Yes. I'm claiming that we are going to be hidden yes. in the shadow of God yes. Almighty. Yes. That a thousand will fall at my left side and ten thousand at my right. It shall not come nigh our dwelling place. His angels will reach their hands out and they will lift us up that our feet will not even stumble because we have set our heart on the Lord God Almighty. I have to preach this message because there is so much fear out there. I have to preach this because I have to hope in God's covenant because I have seen too much. Now this is where we're going to end. Like again, I've got about 20 other scriptures I'm not sharing tonight, but that'll be round two. Hallelujah. (laughs) But this is where we're going to end. Isaiah 41. And by the way, we'll, we'll, we'll do Isaiah 41, but also we'll do Daniel 12. Just one scripture from there. Isaiah 41. Now, I get into this because I wrote in that note that I read today and I remembered it and I said it in here actually. Isaiah, one night I had a dream and in the dream we were in a building. Rich and I were in a building. We were having ministry. It was not our building. It was a church building but it was not our building. It was clear. Whoever the pastor was left and told Rich and I to get in the church building and just to use it. Not to have it but to use it for the moment. Immediately, all these phone calls start coming in on a phone line. On the old telephone lines, you know, they had the red button, the clear button, the clear button, the light up, and you just press the button, right? And it was trying to cause distractions. And finally, I just hung up the phone and I said, I'm not listening to this because the phone line was bringing in utter chaos. Our God is not a God of chaos. He is a God of shalom, peace, tranquility, right? His perfect peace will what? Rule our heart. Well, in that dream, glory to God, I'd like, let this be real, hallelujah, glory to God, that'd be awesome. In that dream, we were given just a couple of checks. And I wasn't thinking anything about it. I was just thinking, it's going to be 10 or $15. I wasn't thinking anything about it. Didn't care. But I opened up one check, and I think the first check was $41,000. I went, woo! $41,000, look at this, Rich. That's awesome. And, and Marita, the second check was $410,000. I was like, woo! I was doing a wild dance setting that dream. Hallelujah. <laughs> and then God said, when I woke up, He said, Robin, go to Isaiah 41. Yeah. <laughs> and the whole time, for months, I had been preaching on Isaiah 40. But what comes after 40? 41. 41. 41. So let's look at Isaiah 41. And we're going we're gonna to end with Daniel 12, 3 after that. Isaiah 41. And we're going to go do verses 1 through 16. Because remember, in the last tower of fire we did, that, that, that wild bullock will come up and have a horn of iron and have bronze hooves and be dancing on the threshing floor. So let's look at Isaiah 41. And we're going to start in verse... 1 and we're going to go to 16. 
Listen in silence before me, O islands and regions bordering on the sea, and let the people gather and renew their strength. For the argument, let them offer their strongest arguments. Let them come near, then let them speak. Let us come near together for judgment. And decide the point of issue between us concerning the enemy advancing from the east. Who has roused up one Cyrus from the east whom he calls in righteousness to his service? And whom victory meets at every step. He, the Lord, subdues nations before him and makes him ruler over kings. He turns them to dust with the sword of Cyrus and to driven straw and chaff with his bow. He, Cyrus, pursues them and passes safely unhindered, even by a way his feet had not trod, and so swiftly that his feet do not touch the ground. Who has prepared and done this calling forth and guiding the destinies of the generations of the nations from the beginning. I, the Lord, the first existing before history began and with the last and ever present unchanging God. I am He. The islands and the coastlands have seen and fear. The ends of the earth tremble and they draw near and calm. They help everyone his neighbor and say to his brother in tiresome idol making, Be of good courage. So the carpenter encourages the goldsmith and he who smooths the metal with the hammer encourages him who smites an anvil, saying of the soldering, That is good. And he who fastens it with nails so that it cannot be moved. But you, Israel, my servant Jacob, whom I've chosen, the offspring of Abraham, my friend, you, whom I, the Lord, have taken from the ends of the earth, taken and called from the corners of it, and said to you, you are my servant. I've chosen you and not cast you off, even though you are exiled. Fear not. There is nothing to fear, for I am with you. Do not look around you in terror and be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen and harden you to difficulties. Yes, I will help you. Yes, I will hold you up and retain you with my victorious right hand of rightness and justice. Behold, all they who are enraged and inflamed against you shall be put to shame and confounded. They who strive against you shall be as nothing and shall perish. You shall seek those who contend with you, but shall not find them. They who war against you shall be as nothing, as nothing at all. For I, the Lord your God, hold your right hand. I am the Lord who says to you, fear not. I will help you. Fear not, you worm Jacob. You men of Israel, I will help you, says the Lord. Your Redeemer is the Holy One of Israel. Behold, I will make you to be a new sharp threshing instrument which has teeth you shall thresh the mountains and beat them small and shall make the hills like chaff you shall winnow them and the wind shall carry them away and the tempest or whirlwind shall scatter them and you shall rejoice in the Lord you shall glory in the Holy one of Israel. He says, fear not while you are kept in the tower of the flock, the stronghold of the shadow of God. He's going to feed you one thing, his own strength, which is Yahweh Elohim. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. You're going to be shut in. And He's telling you, fear not. For when you come out, 
you're going to come out with an iron horn and some bronze hooves and I'm going to make you a weapon of mass destruction to destroy the works of the enemy. Now this is where we end here. Hallelujah. Have y'all had fun? Yeah. I have had an absolute blast. My goodness, I did not know this was going to be so much fun. I thought it was going to be crying. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> but Daniel, this is what God told me. The woman in Revelation 12, with the 12 stars, God said, robbing up to Revelation 1, where Jesus had seven what? Stars. And He clearly says in Revelation 1 that the seven stars are messengers. God showed me the 12 stars are His message, His messengers that carry His message. And we see this clearly in Isaiah 9, 7 of the increase of His government. Because what does 12 represent? Government. Which is His former dominion. His former rule. And the increase of His what? Peace. Which is established on the throne of David in justice and in righteousness. The zeal of God will perform it. Now this is where we end. He said, Robin, these messengers are seen in Daniel 12. These are those messengers. Daniel 12, 3. And the teachers and those who are wise shall shine like the brightness of the firmament. And those who turn many to righteousness to uprightness right standing with God shall give forth light like what stars <laughs> forever God showed me that that crown on that holy Jerusalem were the messengers in Daniel 12 3 where the righteousness of Christ Jesus was so bright when in the time of tribulation. I told, I tell you today, I said, God, why did you have to pick me to live in this time? Couldn't you have let me live earlier? Could have, amen. But he said, nope. I chose every one. I wanted for this hour yes. right Praise now. God. Praise God. And the message he has me having with Psalm 48, the tower progressing. This is the first class. Oh my goodness, how are the other two classes going to look like? <laughs> this is the message. You're going to be so bright with the righteousness of Christ Jesus. And you're going to be a threshing instrument you are going to see supernatural miracles as it is in heaven, so it will be for you. You're going to see supernatural healings. You're going to see things made new. As we are a new creation, you're going to see the greatest revival that has ever been on this entire earth. In Jesus' name, hallelujah.